Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Lisa Erickson. Today we're going to discuss ankle mobility and bringing in all the tools that we've used with our forearm to really work on the calf and ankle. So if you're someone that suffers from immobile ankles or from, angle, or from ankles that you cannot get into a flexible range of motion, this is just for you. So the average person, their ankle flexibility is kind of there. Um, we need to be able to get your, your ankles so flexible that we can get you into a ski position and have your heel touch the ground. It's very important as a climber because if your ankle is not flexible enough to do the full range of motion, then you are working way too hard. It's nice if you can rest on the wall and have all your weight kind of resting in that joint instead of having these muscles have to work really hard to hold you upright. So a nice loose calf will definitely affect the ankle, but a lot of it comes from the joint itself. The joint is held together by what we call a joint capsule. It's kind of akin to a plastic bag. So we have all the bones of the underside of the ankle that meet your tibia and fibia on the top. So we need to have that full joint um, moving perfectly. And so there are a few different layers of joints for the ankle. It's actually a fascinating joint. But our biggest goal today is teaching you how to make it mobile, how to make it flexible so that you can climb without hurting yourself. And if you're getting calf spasms or pumping out, hopefully it will help with this. So I always go with the principle of test, then do our treatment, and then retest. That'll let us know, one, if your treatment's working, and two, um, it'll really give us a basis for how much improvement you're making. If you don't make any improvements and you don't have any pain, then your joint doesn't need to be constantly doing that exercise. But if we test it and you have no ankle mobility, and then we retest it and you have a ton of ankle mobility, it might be something that you want to start adding into your daily regimen. So first, let's go in and evaluate the seam. So first, I'm going to have you kind of take your fingers like this. We're pinching the underside of the calf, and we're just going to go up through that calf, and we're just seeing if we can feel any sore spots. That whole area in the center of your calf, so from here to there, is all muscle. It needs to be soft and loose and flexible. Nothing should feel ropey or tight. Um, if you notice how my ankle is oriented, this calf is loose and lax. It, it should be soft and supple. It shouldn't be tight. I could see it being tight if you're in this position because you're stretching it, but when it is loose and elongated, they should be relaxed. So going in here and kind of pinch your way up the calf, so we're squeezing like this, and we're feeling if there's any sore spots or knots in there. Okay, I felt a few. I'm acknowledging where they are, and, and with this quick scan, you know where to sit on it with your self-care tools. So getting in and working with either a roller, so right where I felt, felt the knot, we can we can toe out or we can toe in and sit right on that knot with our self-care tool. If that doesn't get in there, um, if you don't have something like this, you can cheat with a can of tomato paste or a can of uh, soup. That works. Um, if you have a big foam roller, you can get into this area with something like that. Maybe get the other leg over it. Um, and you can toe in or toe out until you find anything that's sore or ropey. And then you can either just sit on it and wait for it to let go and just try to keep your body relaxed and loose and flexible. The goal is not to be grinding and jamming on this thing, but just to be gently pressuring it. So if the leg over the top is too much, don't do it. Focus all your pressure on that area where the sore spot of the knot is. And our goal is to get that to let go. Um, over pressuring it and fighting with it might make it tight and even more angry, so it might be that we need a light touch with it. So just gently rest the leg on there. And if you're not feeling any knots, boy are you lucky. Um, this foam roller has a large diameter. It's all about pressure per square inch. So if you have your leg resting on this and it doesn't hurt, that's great, but it's really not pushing very hard because it has a large broad surface area and so you might be contacting this much of your calf. So instead, if that doesn't do anything for you, then we can swap to, I'm looking for my dimple ball, then we can swap to something that's a little bit harder. So something like this, and getting into that same area where we, where we found the knot by squeezing it. If you have to relocate it, fine. Poke up and down until you find it, and then feel if it's on the inside or on the outside. And then we find a tight, twangy spot. It doesn't even have to be sore, it just has to be tight. A tight muscle is a weak muscle. And if it has been tight for a period of time, it might be that you no longer have as much blood flow to that area. Um, 
and you may your body may not be talking to you as much as it did whenever it originally became tight because we've been ignoring it and, and we're not on top of of um, listening to what our body's saying. So it tends to talk a bunch with a new tight muscle, but one that's been there for a while, our body tends to not tell us how sore it is. Instead, we can feel it's tight, but it may not be saying ouch, ouch, or pain, pain. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I want you to work on the areas that are tight, just as much so, if not more, than the areas that are painful. So when you find it, just resting it on that sore spot. So I found one kind of right in there. And we're just resting on it and waiting for that spot to go away. So that's something to do. So we said test, retest, right? So we leaned on that for a little bit. Um, and then we come back and we get in that squat position. And we see how that affects our ankle. So mine feels a little bit looser and more flexible. Now don't worry if you can't get all the way down into this position. I've been practicing at it for years. Um, it might be that we're way up here, and that's fine. So with that patient or athlete, I'd say... Weight the, the opposing knee to the one we're trying to work on. And then we'll just very gently apply pressure onto this knee and just gently start stretching it. And you might feel it down into the calf. So here's the calf muscle and it becomes tendon right about here. So from here all the way down, if you feel any sensation through there, that is all tendon. And all it means is that we are applying a load to it. And just be gentle with it. If you push too hard, there is a point where we can apply so much load that you can actually tear that tendon. Um, we don't want to push that hard. So we just want to push hard enough that we're stretching it. And it might be that, that a better posture would be to put all your weight on the opposing leg and then just gently start to rock forward on that. Um, I have really good ankle flexibility because I've been working on it for a while. But when I first started out with my first trainer, um, I think I got to about here and my heel started pulling off the ground. And it really is just taking time to work on it to make it flexible enough. But if you are just to weight your, your pressure on it until you feel a good stretch, you can hang out in that position for a minute, a minute and a half, even up to two minutes. And it's just a gentle, prolonged, light stretch. And then when you come out of it, gently unweight that area so that we are not just loading it and then coming off of it, it, it might talk to us if you unload it very quickly. So that is a good stretch. I want you to do that on both sides and then definitely test and retest to see what your body's response is to that work. Um, additionally, I also wanted to discuss pulling on it with bands. So here, I don't know if we can, can we see that from there? Yeah, we can. Um, here is one of the stretchy bands we have used. I just have it quadruple looped around a leg of uh, my my bookshelf over there. But the goal with this stretchy band is to apply a stretch through the ankle and actually mobilize that joint. So it might be that we need to apply more pressure. Um, something this big would work for a hip. So if you see these at the gym, they're really thick rubber. Um, so this would be too much for the ankle. However, something this small or even smaller than make really tiny narrow ones um, would work fantastic. And these are from Rogue Fitness or from Rock Tape. So getting in here and stretching this guy out, we'll just gently, so this is pretty tight, and as I just work my foot forward, I'm just gently weighting it and pressing down on the knee. And this is applying a traction through that ankle and really stretching out the joint. Now whenever you go see your, um, your chiropractor or your osteopath, PTs do it too, they'll actually manipulate this joint and um, mobilize it by, by pulling in a certain fashion. This is almost the exact same motion. If you sprain your ankle or you, you fall on it, a lot of times we will um, reposition this joint so that the top of this talus is rotated upwards and forwards. So uh, in medical terms, it's a superior anterior tailored dome. So our goal is to get in there and applying this pressure and leaning forward, we're actually pulling it back the direction that it came from. So we are reintroducing uh, joint motion and joint positioning towards the normal, so where that joint used to be. So we're gonna go hunting, um, and, and what that means is we're going to kind of come at this joint from different angles with the stretchy band and see how your ankle responds. It might be that it is you don't feel anything in all these ranges, and all of a sudden you feel it in a different range. I'm gonna pull this down a little bit further. And all we're doing is mobilizing these little joints. 
We call this accessory joint motion. So this ankle is designed to push off and pull up, but it also has all these side-to-side -side motions that need to be there. And if it only tracks in one motion pattern and isn't allowed any of the others, that's where the chronically uh, sprained ankles come from. Some of those patients have a hypomobile ankle, so it's not stretchy enough, and they think they're truly spraining it, but instead they're just stretching that joint capsule and give themselves pain. Um, or they have uneven motion patterns because um, if you wear and tear your ankle joint in, in a specific motion pattern and it's not symmetrical or it's not as our ankle is designed to be used, all of a sudden we lose the other motion. So if you are doing some funky motion with your ankle every time you walk, all of a sudden you can't even walk normal because the joint will contract up in the way you're not using it. So that's how this kind of comes in handy. So just stretching that ankle joint out in all these different ranges. So let's talk about what patient this would help and what patient this would hurt. If you've had a dislocation or your ankle joint is hypermobile, meaning a bunch of the ligaments are gone, I want you to go talk to your doctor before you try this. This is for athletes that their joint is not moving because it's too tight or because it's stuck. So just because you've sprained your ankle in the past doesn't mean you're not allowed to do this type of work. It'd be fantastic for that patient. But for those that their ankle can move all over the place, this is actually contraindicated, meaning it would make you worse. If your joint is already super stretchy, super flexible, we don't want to do more of that. That's, that for you would not help you whatsoever. But for those athletes who are immobile or don't have enough flexibility, um, this would definitely help them. So now let's do the retest. Let's go into that ankle and stretch it and see how much more it bends. And I have so much more stretchiness in my ankle than I did before I did this band. So for me, this band is pretty beneficial. The average climber would really benefit from this. And the whole reasoning behind it is we want to talk about free energy and elasticity. So if you have to work really, really hard to get your ankle from here to there because it's so tight in here, um, it doesn't have, one, it's a lot more work. And two, it doesn't have that free energy it can provide back into the system. So if we can stretch our ankle even further than it used to be able to go, when we let go, it springs and provides all this elastic energy back into the system to push you up the wall or on the trail um, or hiking. It goes back into the system. So instead of having to recreate that motion every time you're pushing off, that energy is stored in the flexibility of the tissue and as you unload that tissue, that motion is added back in so you don't have to work as hard. And a lot of overuse injuries, we see patients constantly, they lose all the energy and they have to recreate it every single time. And that is uh, robbing their body of the potential that it could have. So something to think about. Try these out. Let's see how they go. And then um, if you have any questions, get back to me. And I'm honored that you're watching my videos. And uh, my email is climbinginjuriesolved at gmail.com for those of you that have questions or have a video that you would want me to make for you. Have a great day.